Welcome back, or welcome if you're new. My name is Emma and this is Emma's Cottage. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how you can take a very boring standard shirt and turn it into something amazing. How cute is this? If you wanna learn how you can make something like this, then tag along. All right, let's talk about what you're going to need to be able to follow along with this project. Of course, you're going to need a shirt. And if you wanna use one like this, this is a Bella canvas in Heather mustard. But keep in mind, this is only 48% polyester and 52% cotton. So with that said, this shirt is going to be more faded because it is only 48% polyester. Typically on my channel, I always encourage you to at least try 65% polyester or higher to get the best results. But on a shirt like this, this one was for me, so I didn't mind. Um, but another thing you could use is Wonder Subly. I have used Wonder Subly on quite a few of my shirts just to get them that are um, a lower polyester, like 50% or less. And it just helps get that bright, vibrant um, image. And it usually will last anywhere from I don't know, 20 to 30 washes. So I have been happy with Wonder Subly. I know it's very controversial, but guess what? I'm happy with it. So if you want more information about that, just reach out to me, I'm happy to help. Or join us on our Facebook group so you can find me on Emma's Cottage DIY on Facebook. And we have so many great people in the group, people from beginners to really advanced crafters and t-shirt designers that can help you get started and answer any questions for you that you may have. It's really a great group, so I hope you join. Um, okay, so what are you gonna need? Of course, you're gonna need a shirt. Uh, you're gonna need bleach. So I do not dilute my bleach. A lot of people do. Does it hurt to dilute it, me? No, you can, it, it, it's up to you. You guys practice and you decide what you want to do. I don't dil dilute my bleach because I want it to bleach quickly. And I feel like if I'm gonna dilute it, it might just slow down that process just a little bit. Now, if you, with a higher cotton count, it might be a good idea to dilute your, dilute your bleach. Um, and that's mainly because um, bleach loves to eat cotton. And so if you have a high, a high cotton count, it's probably a good idea to dilute your bleach just a little bit. But mine was fine, and I had mine um, out in the sun for probably a half an hour, and I have no holes, and it looks great, so I'm a happy camper. Now, in today's tutorial, I am not gonna go outside and bleach with you guys. Um, I have plenty of other videos that you guys can go watch on how I bleach, uh, but I'm gonna walk you through what I did to get this look. So the first thing I did was the image area. Um, I made sure that I had a piece of cardboard. I just put cardboard right up in between. And the reason I do that is so that it doesn't get the back, okay? So that was the first section that I did. The next thing that I did is I got my water bottle and I just sat there, I have a, a mister. I think I have one right here, I can show you. Looks like this. So I have a mister water bottle. I'll make sure that I have a link down below. I have these in clear and I also have them in black. Same thing, it's just a, a really pretty mist. Um, so I misted this, this main image. And then I misted the bottom all the way around. And then I misted the sleeves. And the trick with the sleeves is I had gloved hands. And what I did is I held my hand like this right along the edge of where it connects to the shirt, just like that. And then I sat there and I sprayed and sprayed and sprayed and sprayed and sprayed until this was like saturated. I flipped it, I did the back, I did the same thing. Um, and that honestly, I did, I did it as quickly as I could so that all of these sections would bleach equally. Um, and then the last thing I did is you can see all those cute dots. I wasn't going to do the dots, but then I was like, you know what? I think that'll be really cute with this, with this, um, leopard pumpkin look. I just thought that would be cute. So with the dots, all I did is, um, I got a bottle of little glass bottle of bleach. I dipped my glove fingers into it and then I just flicked like this. And that's how I got that look of bleach. Again, I'm sorry I didn't record it. I wasn't anticipating making a video on this, but I just thought it turned out so cute. I wanted to show you. Um, and if you need help with bleaching, just watch all of my other videos. I've got plenty of videos that will teach you how to bleach, as well as joining our Facebook group. We talk about it all the time and give each other tips and tricks. So again, if this looks fun to you, let's tag along. I'm gonna jump over to the computer next to show you how I set up the papers to print with sublimation. All right, here we are on the internet wanting to show you where I got my print from. So I got it from designbundles.net. I'll make sure that I leave the link in the description below, but it's this pumpkin leopard print one and I use just the basic black and white. Currently at the time I'm recording this video, it's $6. So maybe as we get closer to fall and Halloween, maybe this price will drop just a little bit. 
I've already downloaded mine and I'm gonna go ahead and put it in Microsoft Word. Those of you that watch my videos know that I like to use Microsoft Word to print all of my sublimation prints at this time. So the first thing I like to do is you can see up top, let me zoom in just a tad, you can see that the perimeter is showing that I would not be able to print from here to here or here to here. So you wanna make sure that you open up your print as much as your print space as much as you can. To do that, you're gonna go up to your layout tab. You're gonna go over here to margins up in the top left-hand side. Go down to custom margins. And then I just start typing in zero tab, zero tab, zero tab, zero tab. Hit the enter button. It yells at you and says you can't do it. Tell it to fix it and it's gonna fix it for you. It's gonna take it to the 0.12 inches all the way around. And now if you look up top, see how it extended your print space. That's why we do that. So now I'm going to grab the print. I just, like I said, I just did the regular black and white. I have it open on another screen and I'm just dragging it and dropping it into my Word document. Now for the bottom, I think for most of my prints today, I'm actually going to print them on a larger piece of paper. So I'm going to go up here to size and I'm going to change this to tabloid, which is 11 by 17. I could even go a little bit larger if I wanted to because my, my printer does print larger prints up to like 13 by 19. So if I wanted to, I could even do this 13 by 19. But I'm going to go ahead and just do the tabloid 11 by 17 today. Now this is where you have an option. You can either make this bigger, but that's going to make your pumpkins bigger, or you can make it smaller. I decided to make mine a little bit smaller. Orientation to landscape mode. And then what I did is, I'm going to take it maybe about right there. I am going to copy it. Oh wait, first of all, what I need to do, double click on it, go to wrap text, go to behind text. What that did is it made it so that I can move this wherever I want it. So I'm going to right click, copy, and then paste. And then I just kind of move this over until it looks like it fits. And it's just like fitting a puzzle together. It's perfect. I'm going to paste another one and we're just going to keep doing that all the way on this sheet. Voila, just like that. And you could sit there and play with it, move it up or down until you feel like it's a good fit. And then it's gonna print just like this, um, but taking about 0.12 of an inch off. So if I go to my print, it's print right here. You can see all the way around the sheet how it's taking off just a little bit. Um, you could definitely mirror this image if you want to, but you don't need to because this does not have words. I always mirror my images in the printer property section, so you could do that. I'm going I'm to use my Epson 15,000 today. I'm going to click printer properties, and if you needed to mirror it, you'd go up here to more options, and you would click this mirror image button right there. So that's how you would mirror it from the print options section. And then you would just go ahead and print this as many times as you need it. So I know that I'm going to be doing the whole bottom, so I'm going to need two of these sheets for the bottom of the shirt. And then I'm gonna have to do the sleeves and I'm hoping I can get four sleeves to an 11 by 17, but I might not be able to. I may have to take two of these pages. So I plan on printing out three or four of these 11 by 17 pages to make this shirt work. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and print this and I'm going to meet you guys over at the table. Okay, here we are in the pressing corner and I need to make my sleeve templates. Now there's definitely an easier way for this. Um, you could measure it and do the template within Cricut Design Space and then just making sure that you're only printing that template. Um, but this is my first time doing it and I kind of wanted to just figure it out um, to see how many I can fit per sheet. So what I did is I printed out a whole bunch of, um, I have three different 11 by 17s. I'm going to use two of those for the front and back on the bottom. And then I'm going to try and get four sleeves out of one. I have a feeling I'm only going to be able to get like three. So I'll probably have to print another like eight and a half by 11. So to explain to you what it is that I'm talking about, what I did, let me move my camera down a tad. I got some butcher paper and I just put it on like this. And hopefully you can see, you can pretty much see through this butcher paper. And all I did is I went through and just traced along the sleeve. And I'm, as you can see, I'm going a little bit further than the actual sleeve because you want it to be over, not under. It doesn't hurt if it goes over. And then I'm just kind of following the sleeve. You can fill it and you can see it. And then right here, it's a little bit more tricky, but I can see and I can feel the curve of the shirt. And again, maybe going a little bit further. There's nothing wrong with that. Cause you just, you, you just want to make sure that you give yourself enough space. So then what I did is I cut that out. So I've got it right here. It's going to be the same on both sleeves. So it should work. So there's your template just like that. Okay. Then what I did 
is I've got my sheets here and I already put them under the press just for a few minutes um, to help dry them. Uh, whenever I print and I'm planning on pressing like within the next 10 minutes, I usually do that just to help dry the ink a little bit more. And then this is where I'm just trying to decide like, okay, how many can I fit here if I started this direction and then go up? I visually, like visually, I can only see maybe three fitting on this page, not four. So that's why I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to print another one. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out as many as I can out of this. And then if I need to, then I will print off more. All right, so definitely only got three out of an um, 11 by 17. So I will have to print an eight and a half by 11 to be able to get that third one. Or, I mean, I could keep doing more if I wanted to make more shirts like this, then I could just keep printing them and just knowing that I'm gonna get three to a sheet. Okay, so now that we've got those cut out, just to kind of show you how I plan on doing it, is I would just grab one of these and you need to match it. Oh no, did I flip it wrong? No, this works like that. Cut this backwards. It'll work for the back of the shirt. <laughs> yeah, I need to make sure that I do that on the next one. So these will work for the backs of the shirts. Right? Or am I overthinking this? What did I do? Uh -huh. Did I cut that wrong? It's supposed to be like that. So it'll work for this side. Yeah, it'll work for that back. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do it again, bummer. See, these are the things you don't think about until you go do it. <laughs> so basically what I should have done is I should have cut two this way and two this way. Um, and that does make a difference because it has to match up correctly when you go to press. All right, back to the printer. Okay, while I have that next sheet printing, um, because I flipped them wrong, I am going to go ahead and start pressing the other sections. So I think what I want to do is I just want to get this middle section done first, get it out of the way, get it done. Um, and to do that, I'm just going to kind of tear around the image. Whenever you can try and tear, tear, it helps take away some of that, that crisp line that you're going to see when you, when you press these shirts. Something like that. It's because I've got butcher paper, I'm sorry, parchment paper right here. I'm just going to use it for pressing. Quick and easy. You can use parchment paper, you can use butcher paper, whatever you prefer. I have these butcher papers that I buy in sheets, so it's just really nice because I can just grab one. I don't have to waste the time ripping it, which honestly, ripping it doesn't take much time either. So honestly, whatever mood I'm in that day. <laughs> We're going to pre press this first to get any moisture out of it. But before we press it, we're gonna lint roll it. And really having that piece of parchment paper or butcher paper in between this and the press is you know, definitely needed when you're using sublimation so that it doesn't leak through to your element of your press but it also is gonna protect your shirt from scorching too much. It's, it's more than likely still going to scorch, but that's fine because you can remove the scorch marks by using hydrogen peroxide. Just quickly spraying it on afterwards and then covering this over will help eliminate a lot of those yellowing or scorching marks. Let's see that my paper shifted a tad, so I'm just gonna move it back over. And now we are ready to press our main image. I take down my sublimation prints every time because if they shift even just slightly, you're gonna have ghosting. And there's nothing worse than getting this far in a project just to have your sublimation print ghost. It's so sad. So I've got my temperature set at, my sweet spot is about 300, 390, 395 uh, for about 60 seconds with medium to heavy pressure. Um, usually they say about 400 degrees. It just really depends on your press. 
I encourage you to, to get a temperature gun so you can read how hot your press is getting and making sure that it's pressing equally all over. So you may have some areas that you're like, hey, this just is not getting as dark as this section. Use your heat gun to see, okay, is this getting to 400? Is this getting to 400? So what was happening with mine is I was setting it at 400, but it was running hot. Um, I think it was running for about 405 to 410 even though the display was saying it was at 400. So that's why my sweet spot is like 390 to 395 because it's truly running a little bit hotter. No big deal. As a reminder, you don't want to use this again because that image from the paper would have bled through. The paper that I'm using today is HTV Ront. I just recently started using some of their papers just to test them out and I've been happy with it. Let's see how this one turned out. This one's good. Now keep in mind, this shirt is only 48% po uh, polyester. So it's going to have a very faded look. It's not gonna be bright, vibrant black that I'm used to on my 65 or even 100%. This is hydrogen peroxide. I bought this from Amazon. I'll make sure I have it in the links below or in the description below. It came in a package of six. And um, believe me, I've gone through them. I use them all the time. So I'll use them outside to help slow down the bleaching process. And then I use them in here anytime I wanna remove scorch marks. So as you can see, I just did like three squirts, just enough to saturate it, but not get it completely wet. And now I'm just hovering the heat press. I'm using the heat to help evaporate without touching the image. Cause you don't want that image to get up out here on your press or on your Teflon sheet. So that looks good. I'm happy with it. And we can move on to the bottom and the sleeves. I'll show you how that turned out. Isn't that cute? Now this will fade. It, it's definitely going to fade a little bit because it's only 48% polyester, but I know that it's going to fade and I'm okay with it because it's my shirt and it's kind of the look I'm going for. But isn't that image adorable? So cute. Um, I want to say I got this image off of Heather Roberts art um, from her Etsy page. It came in a package for fall. So let's go ahead. This is still printing. My sleeves are still printing. So let's move on to the bottom and I'm going to do that very similar to the same technique when you guys have seen me do um, my sublimation tie-dye when I like crinkle the shirt, it's gonna be kind of that same technique where I kind of taco it up, kind of put it in its own little cozy blanket. So hopefully you guys can see this. I'm gonna angle my camera down just a tad so you can see. So what I'm gonna do, and I decided that the, the 11 by 17 is gonna be the answer, the way to go for this method. Now, if this was a larger shirt, this is a small, if this was a larger shirt, I'd have to get multiple pages and I'd have to tape them together. Um, but for a small, this size works out perfectly. So what I'm gonna do, let's start with maybe the back. And we're gonna move the blowout paper down a tad so that it's on the bottom. I don't mind reusing the blowout paper. I haven't had an issue with that, but I only reuse it on the center of shirts. I don't reuse it and like put it on the front. Hopefully that makes sense. So this shirt's kind of nice to follow because it has seams on the side. A lot of my Gildan shirts don't have seams that go all the way down. These Bella canvases do. Okay. And now we just need to make our cute little taco or sleeping bag or blanket or whatever it is you want to call it. And I'm just going to go right about where that line stops. And I am totally okay if it goes up into it a little bit because that's kind of the effect anyways. It started going. So I'm going to go up into that just a tad. And it's not going to be perfect, you guys. Like it's, it's going to be as good as it's going to be. And this is just me testing it out to see how this is going to work. I'm going to go ahead and take this down. You see I'm right there on the seam. And then I'm gonna get my scissors and cut off some of this excess just so that I don't have, it'll be easier to type, tape together. Being careful not to cut the shirt underneath. I'm pretty much cutting about a um, half an inch away. So that side's taped. I'm not gonna tape this yet. I'm gonna actually flip it now. And now we're gonna get this one and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take it on the front. And I'm trying to get as close as I can to that seam is what I'm doing here. Okay. 
knowing that it's not gonna quite wrap around, but I'm okay with that. It's just my shirt and there might be a better way of doing this and I'll figure that out later. But for right now, this is as good as it's gonna get for me. Let's see how it turns out. Taping this one on. Probably be better if I extended it over, just being honest right now. I'm probably gonna regret it. <laughs> But that's okay. This is uh, this is why I do this so that I can test it out. You guys could see what I do, and then you can go and make it better. See, and I could even yeah. No, I'm not gonna mess with it. We're just gonna leave it like this, and this is how we're gonna roll today. So I'm just going to just like with the other shirts that I do, I'm just gonna kind of take these together so that they won't shift. I'm either gonna love this or hate this. I don't know, what do you guys think? <laughs> this might be a horrible idea, we'll see. All right, now we need to press it. So, let's get some butcher paper because I want to protect my press from any of this ink. So I want it long enough that it's gonna fit the entire press. That looks good. And then I want one for the top as well. I'm going to press one side and then I'm going to press the other and probably the easiest way is to put it in this direction like this I don't want to press this again let's try it who knows you guys who knows maybe I should have a longer press for this or maybe even using my Cricut my Cricut press versus this big heat press because this is only 15 inches hmm that's a thought that is a thought that might be a better idea no, I'm just gonna keep going. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this down so that I'm only getting pretty much half or a little less than half of that image. Let's try that. And I'm gonna do four separate presses. So again, typically 400 degrees, 60 seconds, and with some good pressure. As you can see, I, I let some of this hang out, so I'm gonna have to press this one, lift it up, flip the shirt, and then press the other side. And then we're going to do the same thing to the bottom. It probably would have been easier to do this with my large Cricut press um, and then just been able to lift up and then, because what, what's going to have to happen is I'm going to have to move the shirt, which could result in ghosting. Whereas if I was using my Cricut heat press, the, the biggest one, I wouldn't have had to move the shirt to be able to do that. But we'll see. We will see. I just didn't want to have to unplug this and then wait for that to heat up. I was just being impatient. So we'll see if this, if this turns out okay. Okay, what I'm gonna try and do is not move the paper at all. Like the butcher paper on top, the butcher paper underneath, I'm gonna just try not to move it. Just shift the shirt some. Looks like it's totally covered. We're good. And then let's go ahead and press this. Again, probably not the best way to do this. You guys switch it up. Awesome. So now we, both of the fronts have been pressed. Now I need to flip it very carefully. And let's try the same method on the back. Again, I'm trying to just reuse all of the papers and just not move them. Just basically shifting them slightly. Making sure my image is not in there. It's not. We should be good to go. And we're doing it for the 60 seconds for each quarter. That piece shifted just a tad, but it doesn't look like it got on my Teflon paper. We should be good. All right, now let's pick this one up. Very carefully shifting it all together at one piece. And then making sure that it's fully covered in the press. 
and I can see where the image came up through the shirt so I know how much more needs to be pressed. So that way I'm not repressing and getting ink to come back out. Let's go right there for another 60 seconds. And I got this all printed out. So while we're waiting on that, I could look at redoing this. But I probably need to wait for the sleeves to make sure. There's that one. Okay, so the front and back of this bottom part should be done. So let's take a peek. Don't want to reuse that. Get this stuff out of the way. Got my scissors here to cut off this tape. I'm going to be very careful that I don't cut the shirt, just cutting the tape. Interesting, interesting. I don't know what I think of it yet, but we'll see. Um, I think I love it. What? I think I love it. I think I love it. What do you guys think? I think I love it. And then once we do the sleeves, oh my, I am to look at it. So cute, huh? So cute. Now, you definitely can see that we didn't sublimate right there. So the workaround to that is you're just gonna have to have your sheets longer. So that just means you're just gonna have to tape sheets together to make it work. And I do have other videos on how to tape pieces together so that it will work. Because when I had my smaller printer, I have a 2760. And when I had that one and didn't have my 15,000, I had to tape my pieces together. So I'm really good at taping these together. But that's what I would have to do the next time on this size shirt and any larger shirt to make sure that it wraps all the way around. So, um, luckily with this shirt having the seams, I think it's okay, but maybe with like a Gildan, it might look silly because Gildans don't have the seam. At least the ones that I use don't. Oh, so cute. Okay. Now we need to work on the sleeves and it's going to take some brain power for me. For some reason, I'm so confused about this. So if I have that one there and I have that one there. Then I need to cut the opposite. So <laughs> why am I overthinking this? So then I need to cut this one if I did this face down. Right, would that work? Face down. No, the sleeve would go up. So I need to do it face up. That doesn't make sense either. Oh yeah, that works. I'm gonna use this as my guide. I don't know why that was so hard for me. Couldn't figure that one out. <laughs> Something like that. That one goes there. I should bring a puzzle together. Did I do it right? No, I still didn't do it right. <laughs> what did I do wrong? Hmm. You guys, what? I am overthinking this clearly. So if I cut it like that and it didn't work, then I need to flip it. If I have to print this again, I just might cry. Oh, that's what I did wrong. Yeah, because that would be I need it the other way. I might wait until I, okay, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do it this way, which isn't helping. There we go. If I cut it that way, then it's face down, then I know it'll work out. Don't mind me and my brain fart that I'm having right now. This definitely would have been much easier <laughs> to do a template on Cricut Design Space and just followed that template. It would have been much easier. <laughs> because I am making this way more difficult than it needs to be. There, I did it. So now I need to make one just like that for the back of this shirt, that sleeve. 
Do I have enough space? I might cry if I don't. Yeah, right there. And yes, that would work right there. Right? Yes. And like that, I puzzled it together. It took some major brain power that it shouldn't have. I was overthinking that whole thing. So we need to do the same thing. We need to puzzle this and, and pizza this into a little blanket, just like we did the bottom. So let me lower the camera so you can see how I'm gonna do that. And again, if you wanted to, you could put a piece of parchment paper in between Probably not a bad idea. Just to help it not bleed through. It's probably would be fine because it's a busy enough pattern that if it did bleed through slightly, you probably wouldn't notice it. But I don't want to get this far just to find out that I messed up. Okay, so I'm gonna look at this one. I'm following that line. And I definitely don't want this one to bleed over at all into the orange, I think that would look silly. So I'm gonna cut as close as I can to that line so that it won't bleed over. I might still get some, but I'm gonna try. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, I'm gonna tape right along that line of where the sleeve connects to the, the shirt. Just like so. Then I'm gonna flip it. Oh, be careful, Emma. Like that. And now we wanna do the same thing to this one. Trying to get it as close to this line as we can without it going over. I feel like this part might be a little too curved. I'm gonna switch that up just a tad. All right, I'm happy with that. That's gonna work for me. Now, until I perfect this, I don't think I would sell this shirt. <laughs> I don't know, if it doesn't match up perfectly, your customers might not be happy. I'm going to do the same as we did the bottom and tape the two together. Something like this. And maybe on the bottom. So let's press this one first, and then we will work on pressing the second sleeve. That way, if we make any mistakes, we'll learn from them. How's that? Let's lift the camera back up as we press. Now, the easiest way I've found to press sleeves is by sticking it in off the side like this and letting your image hang off like so. I wanna make sure that I'm protecting my Teflon paper and my press, so let's get some more butcher paper. As you can tell, we're not gonna need as much as we did the first time. Put this up on a much smaller space, putting that underneath. Something like this. And because of the weight of the shirt hanging off the side, a lot of times it's gonna try and pull it. So you'll have to hold it until the very last minute and then pull your fingers out. At least that's what I have to do. Here we go. We're gonna do the same thing we did with the bottom. We're going to press on this side and then we're gonna flip it and we're gonna press on the other side. That's why I do the sandwich technique or whatever it is you wanna call it, sleep bag sandwich, whatever. Taco, <laughs> whatever. I am going to put them together so that I can flip it and then I, I just feel like it prevents ghosting from happening when you do it that way. Okay, the front is done and it's gonna be hot so be careful. I'm gonna very carefully try it just like we did the bottom I'm gonna try and grab the whole thing. Oof, it's hot, it's hot. And I'm just gonna try and flip it. Oh, that did not go as pretty or gracefully as I wanted. <laughs> there we go. Ow, it's hot. I should be wearing my heat resistant gloves, you guys. Doing the same thing on the back. 
I am loving this. So cute. Ta -da. Okay, so I'm just gonna let that one cool down for a bit. As you saw, I started taping this one while that one was finishing. I know I said I was gonna wait, but I'm in a hurry. So let's just tape it off and let's just hope for the best. Okay, using the same technique we did last time, I'm just gonna rip this one in half. Place it down. making sure that this image is not in the heat press. I've had that happen before. I had it fold up on itself and it's the shirt sublimated onto itself and I was so sad. All right, this one is definitely cooled down. Now, one thing I just thought of is I probably should have pre-pressed the shirt on because I pre-pressed the center image but I didn't pre-press the sleeves so I mean that looks like they turned out okay but actually they turned out so cute oh my goodness adorable oh and I forgot to stick one of these in between the other shirt Meh. I guess we'll see if it bled <laughs> this is what happens when you're in a hurry so cute though I love this totally cute again I don't know if I'm gonna sell it because it is kind of a lot of work and you, it's easy to make errors and mistakes and until I perfect it, I don't think I'd be comfortable selling it. All right, there's the front. It's going a bit hot, so be careful. Picking it up. Oh my God, too hot. Flip it. It is really hot. I can see, just so you guys can see, I can see the outline on this. So I am just lining it exactly how it was lined up before. So that way, if it did bleed through in any way, it's going to sublimate exactly the same way as when I first pressed it. All right, we are done pressing front and back. It's gonna be hot, so be careful. You think I'd learn and I'd start using my heat resistant gloves, but I never learn. Now these sleeves scorched a little bit and I absolutely, probably what I'm gonna do, instead of using my heat press, I am going to just spray some hydrogen peroxide on it, just, uh, just a little bit, and then just go lay it out in the sun for like 20 minutes and then flip it and do the other side. But it didn't scorch it too much. In fact, I kinda like the color that it scorched it to because it kinda goes really pretty with this orange. Ah, I love it, it's cute, it's just, it's fun and I totally made something with sublimation that's totally, you know, not typical and different than what everyone else is doing. I've seen a few people try this and I just wanted to try it too and let you guys tag along. So fun, love it. All right, you guys, that's it for today's tutorial. What did you think? Do you think this is cute? I mean, I think it's different and cute and something that you don't see a lot of. Um, it's not for everybody, but I think it's adorable. You know, and who would have thought that you could do you could do full sleeves? Like I said, you're gonna see you're gonna see the the um, sides here, and I think the only way to work around that is by extending the print past, which is exactly what I did here. And you can see you don't see those marks on the arms, and it's because I had them longer than the shirt. So that's one thing that I'll be doing differently going forward is making sure that this is ex um, exceeding past. The other thing that I'm gonna do differently is not use the heat press. Um, for this section down here because it just it's, it will be much easier to lay it flat on my table and to press the sections at a time without having to move it around and risk ghosting. So I'm definitely gonna do that next time. Lastly, I wanted to show you guys, I mentioned earlier in this video that this is 48% polyester and it's going to definitely fade even more. I haven't washed it yet. So with that said, there is some workarounds. I know that it's controversial, controversial. You guys can do whatever you want. 
it's your own choice. I'm just going to tell you that I have used Wonder Subly in the past. Um, I love it. And I'm actually an affiliate of Wonder Subly. I am only an affiliate because I like the product and I believe in the product and I've been happy with the product and I've never had any issues with the product. I would never be an affiliate with any company or with any product that I didn't believe in. Just because I believe in it doesn't mean you have to. That's totally fine. We can have our differences. But I did want to quickly show you the difference in this shirt. It's one very similar. So this one's 40% polyester. Let me double check that. Yeah, this one is 40% polyester and 60% cotton. So this one's definitely less where this one's 48%. But I did wonder subly on both of these shirts, or sorry, one of these shirts and then the other one I didn't. And I wanna show you the difference. Um, and I have washed this shirt multiple times and it hasn't faded much. So let me show you the one without first. So this is a shirt that I did. I didn't make a video on this one. It was just something fun that I tried. Um, and there's the image. You can see it's very faded. It's been washed once or twice, once or twice, definitely faded. Okay. Here is the one with Wonder Subly. Definitely lots more black and I have washed it a few times and it has stayed much more vibrant. I'm trying to show you them both at the same time. Much more vibrant. It's hard to tell with this bright light than the other one. Hopefully you can tell. I'm sorry. I'm trying to hold it. Can you see the difference you guys? Definitely more vibrant with the Wonder Subly. I know that there's other products out there, um, like Polly something, I don't remember. I haven't tried those ones. And you know, if it's not broken, don't fix it type thing. I've been happy with Wonder Subly, so I'm sticking with them. So there you go. That's what it looks like. Could I have done that with this? Absolutely, I just didn't do it with this today. Um, I will make sure that I leave a link to the Wonder Subly listed below if you're interested in trying it. Um, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you learned something new. If you have any advice for the rest of us, go ahead and leave it in the comments below or join our Facebook group and join us in the conversation and the learning online. As always, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. And the most important part is don't forget to ring that bell so that you will get notified anytime that I upload a new video. Until next time, we'll see you later, friends.